It's only a little bit past 7 p.m. I hate that it starts to get this dark this early. I already can't wait until springtime actually kicks in, when it becomes darker much later on in the day. I mean, not that I really care or anything. I don't go outside as often as I should, but the natural sunlight feels nice. It improves my mood most of the time. Isn't there a word for that? Atmosphere? Yeah, that's probably it. I guess ambience works too. Whenever I have to go to the convenience store for something, I always pass by the park on my travels. I have only a few memories of this park when I was growing up. How cool would it be if there was a swing set here? I'd be all over that. That's something I haven't done in a long time. Same, dude. My attempt of reminiscing on younger times is broken by the sound of something I don't think I've heard in a long time. Another long time. Sounds like someone. A play in a heart. Which would be a bit peculiar. Or, wait, no, or is that a piano? It's still peculiar here in a park. Was was that a harp? No, it was a harp. What would one of those be doing out here? That's what I was wondering. I don't even know anybody that plays one, but it sounded like it came from the forest in the park. Curiosity getting the better of me, I make my way off the sidewalk and into the park towards the forest. Approaching the forest shows a path that my parents always forbade me from exploring for whatever reason when I was a kid. Maybe they were just concerned for my safety back then. If there's anything that watching Arthur taught me, it's that if all of us did everything our parents told us to, then the rate of discovery would drastically slow down. Alright, enough thinking about Arthur. We must go in deeper. Surprisingly enough, I don't feel scared at all by walking down this path at night. The sounds of bugs and crickets at night actually makes for a pleasant... Atmosphere. Yeah, that's the word. Continuing down the path, the harp I heard earlier makes itself known again. It's getting louder the more I keep on walking. That means I must be getting closer. While I continue walking, I purposely make sure to keep my footsteps quieter, as to try not to draw any attention. After a little bit more sneaking around, the sight in front of me puts me in awe. It's a lake out here in the outskirts of town. More importantly, it's not the lake that takes me by surprise. It's who's at the lake playing the harp. I wonder who it could possibly be. It's... Yuri, of course. It's Yuri. She's the one playing this whole time. She's in a beige-colored sweater and in black. Pajama pants? Either way, I am awestruck by what I am witnessing. First off, this place is gorgeous. There are trees everywhere. A rather big one seems to have fallen down close to the water. A few butterflies can be seen flying around, and the sight of Yuri peacefully playing her angel's harp. If, if you're gonna make it an angel's harp, you should put an apostrophe so it's business. It's so goddamn stunning. The reflection of the moonlight on the water makes everything feel nice, and her skin glistening under the moonlight makes her look like an angel, which is probably why you decided it was an angel's harp. <laughs> Maybe not a fallen one, but a shining one at that. Oh, mod references. I decided to start tiptoeing over to her and climb about half a meter away from the tree she's sitting on. Quietly sitting down, cross-legged style, I wait for her to finish playing. I'm sure she won't be bothered at all to discover you sitting there. <laughs> Yuri's point of view, 6.53 p.m. Homework was hard to focus on, thanks to everything that has happened today. But I managed to get through and complete everything. Thank goodness I don't have to worry about that anymore. Taking my finished homework and putting it at its proper spot in my purple folder, I placed my folder in my bag. So that's why the other folder was orange. Getting up from my bed, I walk over to my bedroom window to open it and stare into the world outside to let my mind wander. There's no way Natsuki could have meant what she said when she said it. How could someone think of me as likable? I don't really see myself like that. I don't know. But Natsuki has a point, though. Why else would he want to read with me? Why else would he tell me he likes what I have to say? I don't know. Having too many unanswered questions is making me feel uneasy, so I take a breath of fresh air, close my window, and step away from it to start looking around my bedroom. I'll worry about making dinner and writing tomorrow's poem later. I know it'll take my mind off all, off of all this, off of all of this. 
I look over to my knife collection I have hanging on my wall and stare at it for a few seconds, somehow still mesmerized by all the colorful, unique designs on each of them. No. It's been a week since I've last felt like wanting to do that. I still can't believe I picked something like that up. I then look over to the closet of my bedroom, walk over to grab my trusty friend and place it in my bag. I'm glad I have this around as an alternative. Changing out of my school uniform and into some more comfortable clothes, I make my way downstairs and out of my house to go for a walk. The walk to the lake is as silent as I'd like for it to be. There's nobody around, the breeze is gentle, and I'm glad it's not too cold out here. Hmm. That book I brought for him to read. I've read through it a few times already. It would be nice to share it with him and see what he thinks about it, like he's doing with his book. But why, though? What were his motives for bringing in a book he enjoys? Wasn't it because he wanted to share something he enjoys? Much like I did for him? But then again, what Notsky said. Uh, why did she have to say that right before she left today? She's gotta be just joking when she said that. What if... There's no way he could like someone like me that way. But why did he choose to read with me today? Why did I allow it? It's not like anything bad happened, though. Gah! And I'm placing both my hands around my temple, as I can feel a small headache come on from overthinking. Taking a little bit of time to recover, I stop on my tracks and notice that I'm already at the park. The walk here so far seemed like such a blur. Was I seriously not paying attention for that long? I hate it when my mind goes overboard like that and I can't keep up, and I'm missing out on the atmosphere outside. It's okay. Just breathe. After taking some time to inhale and then exhale, I put all my focus into making my way over to the forest path, and then on my way to my familiar spot at the lake. 7.13 p.m. Once she's done playing, she notices me sitting here and jumps back a little bit, nearly dropping her heart. She must not have been expecting me here, and I don't blame her. Allie, what are you doing here? Oh boy, how am I going to explain this? Well, I was walking to the store and I heard someone playing the harp while on my travels, and I... I guess I decided to... Uh, wanted to find out for myself what was up. I'm sorry if I scared you. And then bring my head down for the fifth time today. Oh, you don't need to be sorry. I should have guessed something like this would happen. Sorry. Wait a minute. I then stand up from my spot on the ground and put on a more serious face. No, Yuri. You just reminded me of something from earlier. About what I said to you in the club room. I probably shouldn't have said that to you. And you don't have to try to or at all to be cute. After seeing her face turn pink for the second or third time today, I look away from her out of slight uncomfortableness. You mean discomfort? I guess I was just upset about what was going on and said some things I really didn't mean. I then resume sitting down where I initially was, but Yuri remains silent. I decide to force myself to lock eyes with her. Yuri, you're not upset with me, are you? Mm, no, I'm not. If anything, I'm rather happy that you tried putting a stop to what happened. Phew. Yeah, that's because I didn't like how Natsuki was talking to you. I felt like I had to do at least something about it. That girl really gets on my nerves sometimes. How are you able to put up with her? Yuri looks to be in deep thought right now. I guess it's because I've known her for a while, and I've become used to how she acts. Sounds like they've been friends for a while, then. How long have you and Natsuki been friends? Well... I would use the term friend loosely. Perhaps more acquaintance. Or annoyance. But I've known her ever since the clubs first started. Ooh, I gotcha. I know how that is. I then get up off the ground and sit down on the same tree that Yuri is on. Do you actually know how that is, or are you just saying it? It's about four meters long, so we'd have enough space for another person or two to join us if we wanted to. But for now, just me and Yuri is fine. Foreshadowing? Is the club gonna visit the spot later? She looks over at me with a slightly concerned expression. Hey, Yuri. A little bit off topic, but thank you for giving one of my favorite books a chance. That means a lot to me. Her eyes perk up at me. Oh, well, I should be thanking you for bringing it in. You, you had me in mind when you brought it in. 
That means a lot to me. Wait, did this girl really just do a turnaround on me? Hold on, she brought in a book for me too, did she not? Does that mean... I can feel a burning sensation on my face. Either the gear is grinding in my head and a small smile makes its way onto my face that I don't dare hide from her. Hey, speaking of which, how come I haven't really seen you at all this school year? Did you move here this year or something? I may have seen you once or twice in the library, but my face doesn't hurt from too much blood flow anymore. That's when Yuri smiles sadly at me. Ali, I've lived here all my life. Most of the time around lunchtime, I'll eat in the classroom or the library. That explains why I don't see her in the lunchroom either. Wait, Yuri, do you have trouble interacting with people as well? Yuri nods. Hmm, a bit more than I'd like to admit. Me too. While I do eat in the lunchroom when I'm feeling up to it, I'll sometimes eat out in the hallway if I don't want anyone to bother me or if I'm in a bad mood. Oh, well, I understand where you're coming from. Oftentimes, eating by myself can go become a little lonely. It, well, <sighs> to be able to eat with someone else would be nice every now and then. What's she trying to get at? Someone who won't judge you for wanting to be away from others, I'm guessing? Well, I suppose. Not only that, but someone who can appreciate silence as much as I do. Mind if I join you one of these days, then? She, or she looks pretty surprised at my question. Uh, but then calms down and begins overthinking again. I don't know if you enjoy my company very much. Are you listening to yourself? Wouldn't you have told me to go away just now if you didn't want me around here? Yuri, what makes you think that? I mean, we read my book together today. Of course I'd enjoy spending more time with you. Whoa, what am I saying all of a sudden? Alright, if you say so. But wouldn't people think differently of you if it became an everyday occurrence? Why should that matter? Most people in the school know that I'm different from everyone else. Haven't you noticed that by now? No, not really. Maybe we're one of the same then. Allie, what do you mean? I feel comfortable enough to tell her this. She should know. Do you know what Asperger's Syndrome is? Her eyes awaken at the mention of that. Some relatives on my mother's side of the family have it. So yes, I do. Well, at least you know about it. I don't have it as bad as other people out there. I guess you could say I'm pretty high-functioning. Um... I don't know if you would put a hyphen here or not. Hyphen rules are weird, too. But... You might want to put two that one. I don't know. That's why I see the counselor at our school once a week, because most of my problems are with social situations. But... You don't seem to act so bad from what I've seen in the club. That's because I've had a lot of experience, and failures, with trying to talk to people. When I was a kid, not only was I driving my mom crazy by being hyperactive, but my mind ran at the same pace, too. I always wanted to figure out how things worked, including people talking to each other. That is, when I felt like I had the courage to speak up. There was always a drive to self-improve and to incorporate critical thinking when it came to figuring out how things work. And oftentimes this involved looking back on hindsight over things I've done that could have been changed and also from learning from mine and others' mistakes. Apostrophe. It needs to belong to the others. That's why I may appear somewhat normal on the outside. Because my mind has had the satisfaction of getting to figure out the details on... Well... I think you get what I'm trying to say. Aw oh, jeez, now I'm the one who's rambling. Here he giggles at me. You don't need to worry about that. Just know that you're not alone, Holly. I can relate to quite a bit of this. How old were you when you found out about this? <sighs> I end up looking down at the ground, lost in thought for some time, trying to recollect important info from the past. Once I know exactly what to say, I look back up to meet her gaze somewhat. I found out during my 10th grade year. I had stumbled upon some papers my parents kept stored away and asked about them. That's when they broke the ice to me. Uh... Would it be the, the news to me? Supposedly I was diagnosed when I was seven, but they didn't tell me at all. Probably out of fear of me not understanding anything. I let out a small chuckle at my next thought. I always wondered why I went to go see a strange doctor who asked all kinds of intelligent questions at that age. I look away from Yuri's general direction to stare at the grass below me and gather my thoughts again. Yuri says nothing, though. She must be waiting for me to continue. I don't know if I should be thankful to my parents for not letting me know at such an early age, or betrayed by them for not telling me soon enough. 
I know that sounds weird, but I just don't know. I end up bringing both my hands to the back of my head and look up into the night sky for a bit. Sometimes it really hurts being different from everyone else. Not being able to get hints that normal people can make, worrying about people's reactions most of the time, not wanting to interact with people to avoid unnecessary judgment. I bring my head down and look over at Yuri to meet her gaze. I hope you understand. Hallie, I mostly feel the same. Sometimes I don't know how to talk to people. Sometimes I don't know how to make people see me as normal. So I think I understand how you feel. Please, Nark, try not to feel isolated. Oh, no worries there. At least the feeling is mutual. But, real talk though. Being normal can be really boring at times anyways. True that! Doesn't Marka seem a little too normal? Hmm. Excuse me? Think about it for a second. Monica is the most popular girl in our school, but she hasn't said much in the club the past few days from what I've seen. And besides that, though, she just goes and talks to people. Nothing holding her back physically or mentally. Almost like a robot. I suppose. She does keep herself busy with her schoolwork and the piano, but somehow it's time for her own club. Yeah, Monica also seems like the type to try to get all A's in school. Maybe she's overworked or something. Wait a minute. Monica plays the piano? She does. Didn't you know? Well, no. I figured she'd play something different. Why's that? Because they named the whole instrument after her. Harmonica. Oh, stop it. Other than that, though, you're right. I don't know how she does it, but whatever floats her boat, I guess. At least she's a good person, though, unlike some people in our school. Yuri smiles at me. Monica can be a sweetheart, most certainly. Although I have heard of a few times where she has had to act authoritative... Uh, authoritative? I think it actually is supposed to be authoritative. And put certainly people, or certain people in their place, namely Kay and Clyde. I'm pretty sure those are characters from other mods who are total douchebags. <laughs> Ugh, I'm glad I've never interacted with those two. I've heard stories about how Clyde pushed people into the fountain at the school courtyard and got away with it. Yeah, that's definitely a Fallen Angel reference. That's not cool. I remember hearing about that. Wait, no, that's Outcast. Ah, I always forget Outcast exists for some reason. That one's kind of fallen out of popularity. But yeah, no, Clyde was Outcast. K. I don't remember where K was from, but he was. I've I've seen him before. I remember hearing about that. Uh, that's disgraceful. Disgraceful. Disgusting. Despicable. Nah, I don't think Yuri would get that reference. I didn't get it. I kinda wonder if Monica has ever had to deal with Wallace. Who now? Oh, just some guy in our school. He never really was a problem years before, but he's been picking on various people this year for no explainable reason. I can't understand it. What would cause such an unexpected change in attitude? Beats me. It's an awkward silence between us. Maybe I should change the subject. Hey, Yuri. How long have you known Sayori? I've known her probably about as long as I've known Natsuki. Oh, neat. Were you friends with her before Monica started the club? Well, no. I... Aren't you friends with her? She brought you into the club in the first place? Surprisingly, no. I never was. She's nice and friendly. A people person from what I've seen. But I haven't really spoke with her much. There's another awkward silence between the two of us, but it is broken when I notice her angel's harp laying on the grass next to her feet. A light bulb in my head clicks on. Oh, hey. How'd you learn to play the harp, by the way? Her eyes widen and she reaches down to pick up her harp. Uh, then she returns to her normal sitting position and looks out into the water in front of us. Back when I was a kid, I had always seen them on TV and in books. I told my parents that I would like to try it out. They agreed to it. It's become another hobby of mine, alongside reading and writing. 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 Oh, yeah. Earlier today. Sorry to go a bit off topic, but earlier today when we were reading together, earlier today, you know, earlier today, you mentioned something about how you come here for inspiration. Do you come here for writing ideas as well? That seems to have made her even more happy. Ah, oh, you remembered. Yes. 
Sometimes I'll visit here if I ever need inspiration for writing, or if I just want to enjoy the ambiance and let Earth let my mind wander. This girl, she knows how to captivate my interest. Oh, you like to let your mind wander too? Isn't that one of the best feelings? Yes. It feels very liberating at times, almost like meditation. Yeah, I can see that. The one nice thing about letting your mind wander is that it feels like every single part of your mind is in a constant flowing stream. It allows good ideas to come to you rather than trying too hard to think of stuff, you know? <sighs> and this is from your experience, too. <laughs> I suppose. It happens often whenever I go to the beach. The beach? Wait. How long have I actually been out here? Taking advantage of Yuri's silence, I pull my flip phone out of my pocket and look at the time. 8.05 p.m. Jeez, has it really been that long? I should probably head home soon. Huh? Did you say something? Uh, oh, y yeah. It's getting awfully late, and I really didn't expect to be out for this long. Uh, you're right. I, too, have been out for longer than I anticipated. It is almost bedtime for me. When do you go to bed? It's eight! With that, Yuri stands up from her spot on the fallen down tree. But before she gets the chance to walk away, I extend my right arm to grab her left sleeve and tug at it twice. Wait! Don't go just yet! She proceeds to sit back down on her spot next to me. Holly, what is it? It's time. Look, Yuri, I don't know how else to say this, but I think you're pretty fun to be around. I may be awfully superficial when it comes to stuff to talk about. I may either talk too much or not enough. I may take stuff at face value too often. I know I can be a difficult person at times. But that doesn't seem to bother you at all. That's why I've enjoyed every chance to talk to you so far. It doesn't matter if the two of us don't appear as normal as everybody else. That doesn't matter at all. I believe that nobody in this world should ever be lonely. So, what I'm trying to say is... I extend my right hand towards her. If only my pinky extended. My index, middle, and ring finger curved in towards, towards my palm. I'd like to be good friends with you. From this day onwards. Yuri looks at me with somewhat visible confusion. But seems to get the hint when she smiles and does the same with her right pinky, which then intertwines with each other as she continues to smile warmly at me. This is actually happening right now. This feels nice. Now wait. That's when I bring my thumb up and bring it towards... or outwards towards my pinky. We gotta stamp this to make it official. She giggles at me and proceeds to do the same until the faces of our thumbs make contact. Adorable. Oh, you. I guess we really are friends now. I flick her back. Right now, I wouldn't have it any other way. Thank you, Allie. You've made me feel really nice today. I know I'm not good with people. This might be a little different to me. But I hope that I can return the favor sometime. So this is it. This is the start of something new. Things can only look up from here on out. We've probably gazed into each other's eyes for the past few seconds or so, but it was well worth it. Her eyes have a very inviting glow to them. It makes me feel more safe. You mean safer? Our fingers break contact with each other for the night. We should probably head out now before Monica interrupts us for talking too much. The two of us share a moment of laughter before getting up from our now imprinted spots on our spot. Trademark. How do you make it? How do you make an imprint on a log? We walk away together on the lake and out into the park, enjoying the comfortable silence between us. Well, that was just pure wholesomeness.